Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live and tonight we welcome and celebrate the four top vote getters for our Sin Expose Film Festival that just concluded this past December. I want to welcome Thomas Waldon, David Ellison, Malcolm Owens, and Millie Ryan. Guys, uh, congratulations first off for getting the top four votes in the festival. And above all, I want to say to you guys, picking up a camera and creating something with just an idea, that takes a lot of courage. And people don't really understand how hard it is and how it does take a lot of courage to do. And I applaud all of you guys for doing that and coming out with some really, really good stuff. Uh, that a lot of people enjoyed. So congratulations. So uh, I just want to go across the board and just say, what was your inspiration to doing your short that you submitted? And let's start with uh, Tomas was on the top left there. Okay. Um, so it's kind of, well, hi everybody, first of all. Uh, so nice to see you all. Uh, congratulations on the shorts. Uh, amazing stuff. Um, so it was kind of a funny story. Uh, uh, originally we did not intend to film what we actually made. It was kind of going to be a drama and it wasn't going to be that short film. We were going to record a drama short and after recording that, a different story, not a horror story. Um, we looked at the material, the, like the sound and it wasn't good. So we had these actors, we filmed this short in Argentina in Entre Rios, which is one of the provinces. And we had the, we had basically everything there, the equipment, but the story wasn't working. So we scrapped it, and there was this really cool location that really caught my attention, which was the gas station. Yeah. And a few days before, we were actually shooting and creating like some photos inspired by some Pinterest images, kind of like uh, Suspiria by Dario Argento. And it was kind of like that vibe playing out with the colors, kind of like art housey, you know? Mm -hmm. And from there... Uh, kind of like this, like a story popped up, like what happened if we grabbed like kind of like the ghost image, also inspired by David Lowry's A Ghost Story. Really love that uh, visual, um, like the idea of a ghost with just a blanket is something that really resonated, but it doesn't always work. So what if we make it kind of like a B movie with lots of colors and kind of like justified by these two worlds? So kind of like we parted from there. And it was funny because we had four actors, so I, everybody was there, and I couldn't like just knock one of the actors out. So I had to work out and make one character like for each of the actors. Um, and we only had one task cam recorder, so we couldn't have we didn't have a boom operator, so we had to like work around that. So that's why no no two actors talk on screen in the same shot. Ah. So that's where we added the phone. So it was kind of like a problem solving thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it was well, I mean. Whoever makes independent films, which is all of us, I guess, knows what it is like to make a film in these conditions. So it's kind of like problem solving. So once we had the script, we had the characters, we had the style. We just worked out with two RGB lights, kind of like the same style with the photos. And it just took a life of, the, uh, of its own. And um, yeah, Absolutely. it was inspired kind of like that. And that's how you, we got, you got Ruta, which is the name of your short. And... Necessity breeds basically innovation. You know, you got to work with what you have and uh, it, you make it work. And time and time again, whether it's a multi-million dollar film that you're working on or the lowest of lowest budget films, there are going to be problems that you come across that you got to work your way and think a way around. So let's move over to Millie. Your film is was co-directed. What's the name of your uh, the other director? Uh, that would be Jacob Tamas. Jacob. Now, yep. your your film is Solus, and uh, it was very good as well. Uh, all the films are great. Uh, I love, I'm, I'm a sucker for a good paranormal story. So tell us the inspiration behind Solus. Oh, the inspiration behind Solus. Um, it's right what you know. Is that not lesson one? <laughs> and so <laughs> for me... Um, basic backstory I uh, had a lot of anxiety a lot of mental health problems and I actually didn't leave the church which is actually I, I'm on set at the moment Solus was actually filmed in my house Wow! so wow. 
we own a church and that church is a second hand store. This building was built in 1863. A lot of history here. I can uh, a lot of ghosts, a lot of spirits. And I, for one, don't really mess with that side of stuff. So there was a lot of fear in that. And it's like, okay, what am I afraid of? I'm afraid of being alone. I'm afraid of my parental figure dying. And I'm afraid of Ouija boards and demons and, and that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much where the inspiration came. Awesome. Awesome. Now, yeah. uh, moving on to David. Okay. Uh, familiar. Now, familiar. Uh, I would have to say out of all the movies that were submitted was the most cinematography rich film out there. Uh, in fact, there's no dialogue in it at all. But yeah. yet the imagery that you brought to the screen was absolutely phenomenal uh, Thank you. and very good special effects. So I would love to hear what inspired that story that takes place, what is it, in the early 1900s, like post-World War One era? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a Shawshank Redemption type, mm -hmm. type era. And, um, and basically, it's it's actually based off a, a full feature screenplay that I wrote. And the, the idea came from, at, at the time, I was living with someone, uh, and it wasn't working out. Um, and as a result, I was getting really, really depressed. And that kind of back and forth i was thinking there's, there's there's a film in here somewhere and i was also watching um uh tina turner what's love got to do with it mm -hmm. uh when obviously there's the domestic abuse going on between ike turner and tina turner and then shortly after that i watched the 1979 salem's lot oh. um which is such a good movie oh yeah um and the the the, the, the helper to the vampire you know you'd, you'd see him at the doorway going into the house and i remember thinking what goes on in the house when there's nobody around what's the relationship and what if it's this like toxic abusive relationship kind of like i can see the turner do you know what i mean where he has to do as he's told sometimes he does do as he's told but he still gets attacked because you've just got this thing victimizing him mm -hmm. and so it came from yeah that sounds really dark actually but yeah <laughs> that's where it, that's where the majority came from and, and, and obviously you know the, the experience i was going through at the time with this uh with this flatmate where it just wasn't working out and um yeah, yeah, the the effects we got from I just put a post up on a Facebook um, uh, group, which was all about visual effects, and just basically said I'm looking for a guy um, to do some VFX for us for this film, thinking that we wouldn't get as good as what we got. And the guy who got in touch was a guy called Dimitri who works for Disney. Mm. He's he's currently working on the live action The Little Mermaid movie, and um, at the time he was so fed up with doing cutesy cutesy stuff he was just like i just want to do something cool and evil dead too and all that kind of stuff and i said well hey this might be right up the street so you know he just totally got into it loved it all he did was charge us for materials as well wow that so, is so we, cool man yeah Dude, we wow it, yeah we got ridiculously good quality out of the guy and nothing was too much trouble for him you know originally it was going to be a latex mask and he was like no no we won't do latex we'll do silicon because it looks better and i'm like well that cost more he's like fine fine don't worry about it <laughs> uh the guy was a dude honestly and it, and it was just like and when we and when we shot it, he was so proud of what we'd done and he said you shot the creature the, the way i liked and all that kind of thing so yeah awesome man congratulations oh, all right thank you so much thank you next we move on to trapped uh and malcolm uh and i'm sorry i didn't uh the co-director uh, i didn't catch your name i'm sorry so this is actually my cinematographer Cine basically he reads my scripts right after i get them done he does yeah. pretty much everything so I'm just I just show them everything. We pretty much work together. It's like a we're inseparable. We're 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 pretty much a team yeah. every time we do something. So, so while I do direct it, you know, we hash it out. I yell at him and tell him that's not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I say yes, sir. I get the shot. <laughs> no, but, so. So you uh, guys came up with Trapped, uh, the one of the longest of the shorts. It was just over thirty <laughs> minutes, and I have to say, it's like every person's worst nightmare to wake up somewhere. <laughs> To wake up somewhere and you cannot escape. You can, no matter what you do, you can't leave. What inspired that story? So this is I, a lot of people have asked me this, and they always watch it and say, "So what do you think when you're watching this?" So 
it's really funny because the first thing that I thought of was I was working at a movie theater at the time and I was in the in the theater cleaning it out and I just looked up I was listening to the music as we were in there I said god I hate my job that was my first thought I said I should write this into something uh so initially I ended up writing this uh it was around 15 pages at first um, and it just kept growing um, and it really came a lot from the just meandering day to day doing just the work every single time. So as, our, as you see in the short, the main character has to go through uh, the everyday work of getting every single thing uh, handed to him. He doesn't know what's going on. Um, you could see like the demons is sort of like management. Uh, you could see the other people as sort of his co-workers that he has to be there mm -hmm. to bear with the new guy as well, the new guy at work. Um, but really, um, this was just all coming from my work life and the actual inspiration for directing it itself. Um, I didn't realize this until afterwards, but a lot of people told me um, that it was really inspired by The Shining, which I watched not too long before I actually went and directed it. Wow. And when formulating the shots and going into wow. the cinematography, that's I studied that nonstop. And Dario Argento's uh, Suspiria, um, those were like just, I watched those like so many times in prep for this movie. That is so cool. Now, I want to go across the board again. You guys all did horror shorts, okay? Um, is horror your main passion? Tomas, you sort of touched on it that you were not originally going to make a horror, you're going to do some kind of, some kind of drama but is horror a passion of yours yes actually it, it's one of the it's one of the genres that actually got me into filmmaking um as a kid i've always watched horror movies stephen king my mom actually didn't let me watch any movie that had sex scenes but if it had blood, <laughs> it's okay. so it's like that, that that's good parenting you know um but yeah like i watched Ch chucky as a kid um but yeah horror has been with me uh, always how about you, Millie? Is uh, you know you talked about the very spooky environment that you live in. Uh, so has horror has always been a part of your life? Actually, no. <laughs> I'm. Uh, we mentioned a ghost story before, and that's that's way more up my alley. I'm a I'm a drama girl through and through. Now let me ask you a question. You mentioned the environment, the church, and all that. Is your you know when you were making this short? Would you say it was sort of uh, a way of you dealing with your fears? Absolutely. And did it help? Yeah, easy. Yes, it did. I actually um, got my mother involved. So the, the woman opposite opposite me in the short is actually my real life mother. <laughs> <laughs> and no, she didn't want to smother me as a child. <laughs> that line was very weird. I just wanted that was to she creepy. wasn't happy saying it. Yeah, I'm like, I just wanted to smother you. I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> uh, now, David, horror. Uh, coming up with such a, a short like you did, I got to assume you've got, like, you're a true horror fan, right? Um, yeah, I'm a creep, man. I'm into all sorts of, like, <laughs> creepy stuff like that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very much... My short was... For me, this, the creepiest stuff's like the old stuff. I mean, and I mean the really old stuff, like uh, silent movies creep the hell out of me. It could be a drama and it's still creepy because you've got these sinister wides and, and the people with the freaky eyes <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. So, like, you know, for me, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of harkening back to that. It's, it's why I made it with no dialogue, you know, so that it was like, kind of felt like a little bit of a silent movie. But, yeah, I used to, um, I was I was the same as Thomas. I was, you know, my parents would let me watch anything apart from, as soon as sex came on, it was bed, you know. And, um, <laughs> exactly, but, yeah. But I could, I could watch anything, you know. It, I remember he, the only film they wouldn't let me watch was Evil Dead 2. And they said, you can watch it tomorrow in the daytime, just in case you get nightmares. They let you so, watch the first one, though? Well, it was banned in the UK for so long, ah. so we couldn't get a hold of it. But ah. like, they'd let me watch The Exorcist, they'd let me watch American Wealth in London. But when when they hired um, what's it called uh, the, the one with Jack Nicholson, uh, Witches of Eastwick, and he yeah. starts flirt, he starts flirting with Cher. It was bedtime, man. I couldn't watch that. Yeah. Now, Familiar <laughs> is a uh, a great example in filmmaking on how dialogue, of course, dialogue is important in telling a story. 
But Familiar has no dialogue. It's all about the movement. It's a story told, and it's told very well by a person who is um, just being terrorized uh, and being controlled by this demon uh, that he sees in his head. And you got to ask yourself, it, is this really a demon? I mean, it's a possibility. Is this a guy who's mentally ill? Uh, and all the different questions that pop up. But it just highlights the importance and the beauty of motion pictures and how a story can be told just through movement and uh, cinematography. And great job on how you put that together. Oh, now, Malcolm... Uh, where does horror lie in your guys' heart? I mean, you explained the story on the inspiration for Trapped, but would you call yourself a horror fan? I like watching horror, but I don't really write a lot of horror. I think that's the only other horror script I've ever wrote, um, period. Um, I actually have, like, one horror idea for some Wendigo story to do way down later down the line but uh really a lot of the things i write is typically dramatic um thriller and sci-fi i tend to i've just noticed that i write a lot of sci-fi so <laughs> that's awesome that's cool now uh tomas going back to ruda uh when i was watching that it made me feel like uh sudden death what if you were just to die unexpectedly in a split second where you know in the afterlife you don't even know you're dead okay uh did that thought cross your mind when you were making this so yeah the idea of it is like basically the main character doesn't know she's dead she's mm -hmm. like in some kind of limbo and as as each time she really like she re reduce every single thing before her death when she's becoming more aware of the situation it's like information or this kind of like limbo starts changing whatever appears like towards the end of the short film her brother isn't uh, next to her so it's like the realization of her being dead is going to set her free yeah. So she doesn't know she's dead, but it's like, you know, the puzzle pieces are coming together towards the end. And we don't know how many times she's relived that kind of limbo. There is a big belief in the paranormal world that uh, I don't know if you guys actually believe in the paranormal or not. I've never experienced it, but I'm a believer. I don't ever want to experience it to be <laughs> a believer. But, uh, I, you know, there's a theory that if you die an unexpected death really quickly, that you're lost. You don't know you're dead. Uh, who knows what it's like on the other side? And these people need help uh, to be told, hey, you've passed away. You can move on. Uh, so it's a theory. It's possible. Who knows? Now, going to the filmmaking process itself, uh, I stated in the beginning of this show that you guys have my deepest respect for picking up that camera and creating something let's talk about some of the challenges millie uh you know for people out there that want to do this that want to create something on film what were some of the challenges that you had to face that would probably be a question better suited to mr tamas who isn't here today um we actually had a lot of trouble with lighting so we had to you know try and figure out how to how to get the the scenes and the, the vibes that we were after just with candlelight or you know remembering what light was on or was the bathroom light turned off or this or that but um we came through and i think we got excellent low light shots the the boys they really know what they're doing nice. i work with three very gifted um videographers and photographers nice very lucky now, uh, going to familiar, okay, like I said, a very rich cinematography film, you must have faced a lot of challenges into getting those shots the way you did. I would assume you must have. So how did, what was, what was the biggest one and what did you do to overcome it? Um, the, the biggest challenge was probably in pre-production, trying to find the location, which we never actually found. Um, because I must have checked every manor house all over the UK. And it was it either looked like Downton Abbey 
or it was decrepit and falling apart. And so I wanted that kind of colonial American kind of look. So we, we ended up having to build it on sets. And I mean, that was great. It was a great experience just because it freed us. It freed us with shots suddenly. You know, if you want to go through a wall, you just smash a hole and put the camera through it because it doesn't matter. It's, it's just a bunch of set flats. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, the tricky part was that was, was trying to find the location and also finding my actor, Hugo. That took forever. Um, I must have I must have looked at so many different people, and, and there, were, there were certain people who could act right, but they didn't look the part. And I really wanted that kind of hawkish, dark, world weary, non specific background guy like Hugo, who's Portuguese. You know, I, I kind of look at him and think he could be American, or he could be French, or he could be vaguely European. You just don't know where he's from. And the minute I saw him, I knew he was the right guy. And I looked at his show reel, and and was, I was like. I think he can do it. And I just offered it to him without without even auditioning. I said, are you game? And he, he was like, yeah. So He was great. He was great. No, he was amazing. He was so good. Now, yeah, he was fantastic. Yeah, he oh, was. Yeah. Like, now, yeah. in Trapped, which takes place inside of a movie theater, you, I assume you guys rented out a theater to get the shooting done? Yep. I went, in, um, I went on a Oklahoma's uh, Film Commission website, and they have a great list of places and we actually just went ahead and called the place um asked them can we rent this out for three days uh and they said yeah go ahead come on um so yeah we got all that done in about three days yeah and it was a really rich location because i mean there's already theater lighting there mm -hmm. so we had the luxury of being able to use practical lighting while also using our own lighting to go with it Okay, that's great. Now, that begs to the next question. Of course, there are a lot of people out there that want to make films, but money. Okay, that's that's the question for everybody is money. How do we pay for it? Uh, shorts can be anywhere from a couple of minutes up to Trapped, which is just over 30 minutes. Uh, so, you guys are talking to somebody who wants to do what you guys did. Uh what would be the first piece of advice on how to finance it? You know, from a thousand dollars to two thousand to ten. Tomas, I mean, what did you do to get the money together to make uh, Ruda? So, to be honest, uh, there was actually no money involved. It was um, my own equipment and very passionate people, and that's basically the best thing that you can get uh, going going to university, you know, meeting people that are in the same path as you are, uh, people that believe in a story and people that actually want to get things done mm -hmm. because money was always going to be a, uh, an, like an excuse and it, everybody just has a phone. If yeah. you have a good story, you just got to get out there and, and record it. And there's going to be a ton of people that are willing to go on a filmmaking journey and create uh, a short. So it's just a matter of finding the right story and getting people that, to get on board just share it because at the end of the day you get a good uh product if everybody believes in it and, yes. and the story is well told so i think you just need to get that inspiration into people and and you can get it done absolutely in fact i want to do we'll give it to million with the continuation of the finance question but i want to go across the board and see uh cameras okay the actual technical equipment how many of you guys film this on a phone did any of you film your shorts on a phone? Okay, nobody. So uh, when it comes to camera equipment, did you go and rent professional equipment? Did you buy a regular, you know, camcorder? Uh, Millie, what did you do to, to get the cameras and all the equipment that you needed? Like I said before, I'm incredibly lucky to work with three men who have audio equipment, microphones, like numerous cameras and I've got a handful of cameras myself. So between the four of us, um, Solus actually only cost us $11. Wow. Wow. Fake blood at the rest of it we had. So, you know, people, you don't have to go out and rent thousands of dollars of equipment to make a film. That's just not true. No. Not true at all. How about for you, Malcolm and Trapped? I mean, what kind of equipment did you guys use? Uh, we we own uh, all of our equipment. We used uh, a Black Magic Cinema Pocket 4K uh, with a 35 millimeter lens and 50 millimeter lens. Um, we used a 
uh, gimbal uh, Moza Air 2 and some RE HMI lighting. So we had like a 1K, two 650s and a three 300. And we kind of just made do with all that stuff. And uh, you guys already had that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of it was like the dolly um, and the bounce boards and stuff handmade myself with like PVC yeah. and styrofoam. So nice, nice. Very, very creative. Now, familiar. I mean, <laughs> going back to that cinematography again uh what kind of what, what kind of equipment did you use uh we shot on two uh ari minis um we had one camera on a set of sticks permanently and one camera on a technocrane from panavision and we were shooting on uh cook uh anamorphics uh it was all rented uh i wish i owned that stuff i don't i've got a red camera but we decided to shoot um, um ari af because i just think it looks a little bit more classic film uh, I got lucky because in my area, I, I work with a lot of the higher companies on more boring stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm always doing them deals and they're doing me deals. And I just basically said, you know, can, can you, we still paid, but they gave us a ridiculously good rate. I think like, you know, we probably wound up paying something like 20% of what anybody else would normally pay, but that was just through building these relationships together. That's pretty cool. So the uh, financing was all self-financed? <laughs> Yeah, which is why I am ridiculously poor right now. <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> I haven't bought new clothes in so long. No, it's uh, it's one of them where it was it was it, it, it did get out of hand. Um, I initially set a price on it and said, right, I'm not going to go above this. And then someone said, yeah, but wouldn't it be cool to do this? And I was like, all right, I'm not going to go above that. Yeah, but wouldn't it? And wouldn't it? And then it just went above and above. And then before you know it. I was just like, right, in for a penny, in for a pound. That's why producers and, um, are on set to make sure that the director yeah, stays within budget. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you are the yeah. producer, you're like, yeah, go on then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, now, you guys rented out a theater for three nights. Uh, just that alone, how much did that cost in Oklahoma, you said, right? Uh Oh, so since we already owned a lot of this, this, this is going to be really surprising. Outside of literally buying the set, it, we didn't go over it was like we didn't go over uh, 2k entirely for the whole yep. budget it's not bad and you guys like i said you guys filmed a 30 plus minute short for under yep. 2k nice. oh yeah and the thing that cost the most was just the location at 14 or 1200 dollars mm -hmm. and that was about it nice nice now tomas um uh ruda how many films prior did you make to Ruda, shorts or other films, or was Ruda your first ever film? So actually not. I went to film school. Um, so uh, in Argentina, it's a five-year degree, so we're constantly creating uh, short films, different situations. So we're always kind of like exposed to that kind of like creative process. But a short film, I think that's probably like my, I would say, fourth or fifth and it came after feature film which i we just finished like about a few months ago it was a four-year process so yeah i would say that it, it would come after three or four short films and a feature film so you have a feature film is it does it have distribution does it have a buyers i mean so we're currently in that state right now uh, we had the premiere it's a drama film coming of age film um and it's it's currently just in film festivals uh, we had our premiere at the San Francisco Latino Film Festival, mm -hmm. and we're just waiting to see and if we get a buyer. So we're currently in that state right now. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Millie, how about you? What kind of prior experience did you have, or was this your first dive into filmmaking? This was our first attempt. Nice. Yeah, first attempt, and to come in the top four was... It was very humbling, the, the four amazing. of us. We were, That's amazing yeah, for your first you. attempt. Awesome. Thank yeah, you so that's much. amazing. That is amazing. And uh, was it what you thought it would be? Was it just like, this is my calling? What were you feeling after you saw the final edited piece? I've found my niche. <laughs> I've found what I am on this planet to do. It is, it is film work, guys. <laughs> That is so awesome. Uh, well, welcome, to, welcome to the slog. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to not Thank getting you. your clothes for a long time, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the terms... Luckily, I live in an op shop. I live in a shop, so 
There's a reason <laughs> why there's a reason why the term starving artist exists. Trust me. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, yes. you know, David, familiar. I mean, I know that cannot have been your first foray into filmmaking. So how much prior experience? How many years have you been making these films? Uh, well, I've been doing this since 1996. Wow. I would say it was my first short. Uh, I mean, Millie did amazing for her first shot. My first shot sucks. I would <laughs> never show it. It's it's, it's awful. But um, this was back in the day when you know we didn't have access to the high end. Oh God, I sound so old. Uh, you know, you. I, I don't know how old everybody else is, but I'm I'm 42. And when I first started, um, it was it was you know Crazy. standard. De- <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It was standard definition, man. It was hand cranking the standard definition horror stuff, and. Um, and and it was trying to make that look good, and it was so difficult. And you know, getting hold of high end equipment was was so difficult. We had no DOP friends or anything like that. I set up my own corporate video company and started to generate equipment and things like that. And I worked on more and more high end stuff. And uh, yeah, it was just teaching myself about the high end cine side of things that mm-hmm. helped me kind of get through it all because. Uh, I'm a DOP as well, and I can DOP to a a certain level, but Mm -hmm. not as high as the guy who DOP'd my film. Uh, But because of that, it enables me to kind of, you know, go a bit more above and beyond. Now, how about you guys? You said you guys have known each other forever. Uh, You've been working together for a really long time. Uh, How much, how many films prior did you make before this? Or was this your first dive as well? Uh, us? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, this was not really our first, but we've never, I never took film school ever in my life. I've wrote one or two screenplays right before that, and we kind of just jumped into it. So, the first thing that we ever did was this thing that we shot at my own home, and it was, uh, uh, Kind of a feature. It's a sixty-six minute long thing, um, and it really, it, uh, it really humbled us yeah. because <laughs> you know we we had big thoughts, um, very unrealistic as everybody else is. Um, and again, we're also young, so you know we're obviously we're very ambitious still. Um, but after making it, I went ahead and said I wanted to do this short film that I had wrote. So I went ahead, uh, did everything, and this is the second thing we've ever done in film at all. Wow. Good job. Good job. Amazing Uh, work, guys. uh, David, did you, uh, well, first of all, by a show of hands, who, uh, how many of you partook in the post-production editing phase of your films? I did it. Good. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Millie was, Millie was the one overlooking the shoulder and making sure that it was done properly. Um, when it comes to the editing post-production, that is probably one of the things that takes the longest times. Uh, it doesn't yeah. matter. It, it's, yeah. I'm an amateur editor. I've been editing for 20 years and I know the work it takes to put together just a, a one minute clip. Uh, David, uh, with familiar, uh, how long did the editing process take to get it just the way you wanted it to? The, the editing actually wasn't too bad. I think because uh, our editor was doing a lot of TV, so we could only spare, I don't know what it was. It was something like two days a week. Mm-hmm. And um, that was actually not too bad. The, I think the process that took the longest in post was the sound design. Um, and that was because we went through, I think, four or five different sound designers who came on board and nobody was delivering the mm-hmm. way we wanted so we wound up just doing it ourselves. Because... Well, explain to the people what a sound designer does. So sound design is basically creating the soundscape of the film, the atmospherics, the sound effects, mm-hmm. uh, acknowledging every uh, audio event that may happen outside of the um, uh, score and um, dialogue. And everything felt a little bit, I don't know if this reference works for you guys, but everything felt a little bit Doctor Who. It felt a little bit cheap. Um, people were using sound effects, and I thought, I've heard that sound effect a million times before. And they were doing the obvious stuff, and we wanted it a lot more subtle. So um, when we were in post, 
the composer of the film, who's my best friend, yeah. um, he, he said, look, I'm pretty sure between me and you, we could do this ourselves. And, and that's what we did. And then we put the sound, sound, uh, you know, laid the carpet down and then sent it off and got the whole thing mixed. I think editors in the industry are some of the most underrated people. Mm. I mean, I Definitely. think I don't think they get the credit they deserve because uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, a movie can be made or broken in post production. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely, it's legit made in the editing room. It so. is. Yeah. It really yeah. is. What, what's great is when you get an editor who just thinks of something you never even thought of, or sometimes it can be a mistake. Sometimes they can just you know put something that shouldn't be there, and you're like, whoa, actually that that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and sometimes yeah. it's intentional. Sometimes it's not, but. You can be so close to a project and not see the right way to go about it. Or you could be fighting to keep a scene in or a shot in that you're like, that has to stay in. And they're like, get rid of it, you know? And, and, and sometimes you'd get rid of it and it's like, wow, that's like 50 times better. So yeah. the art is so essential, yeah. so, uh, so it, underrated. It's always great to actually get a second view on whatever you're working on. Cause uh, I'm pretty sure most of everybody was like basically involved in the editing. Mm-hmm. But when you get a second look at it and it's, you get to see something that wasn't there. And that's that's amazing because you're basically focused on your vision, and sometimes your vision isn't the best way to tell the story. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I, I, I don't know if any of you guys went through it, but for me, the most still the most depressing part of making a film is when you get your first assembly. When you, when you, when you, <laughs> you oh my god, you're like, what? This sucks. I can't <laughs> fix this. <laughs> Your editor's like, no, 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 calm down. Everyone says that. This is when not I first good. This is not good. Super <laughs> nauseous. I was like. It's horrible, isn't it? You, you just think, guys, I, I shouldn't be doing this. I think I, I can, I convinced myself I was really good at this. And it's just so funny how I, I see like um, interviews with big directors who say the same, you know, they oh, get yeah. into the editing room. There was one director and he says the editor had a little um, sticker on the bottom of his monitor that says your assembly will suck. Don't worry. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you need to be reminded of that. You know, Everybody's their own worst critic. Everybody yeah. is their own worst critic. Now, Millie, you also start in your uh short what kind of acting um you know aspirations do you have (laughs) that was actually um my first time acting so my first time writing co-directing acting you're making this look bad (laughs) (laughs) how did it feel to be in front of the camera and having you know this would be your first time acting did you like, wow, this is not so bad, or was it way more difficult than you thought it would be? I felt like I just stepped into the role that I was born to born to play. It was like, oh my God, I I actually know what I'm doing. I have direction. I, I, I know film back to front. I know what's going to look good. I know what's going to sound good. And having these other three boys to work with was just like... <gasps> We can actually make our dreams come to life now. We have the equipment, we have the know-how, we have the knowledge. It's all just coming together. Now, you mentioned the Ouija board earlier, which is in your short. Uh, Were you at all, you know, cautious about using a Ouija board, even though it was just for a film? Oh, 100%. (laughs) Any time that I was like, you know, Mom, are you there? Can anyone hear me? My fingers were not on the planchette. I was not connecting to that realm at all. No way. I'm a, I'm on one now. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't bring whatever you have with you over here. Uh, now, uh, the setting, the time period, David, for familiar. Uh, I know you sort of touched on this earlier, but how important to that story to the story was that? the actual time setting um i mean it didn't have to be super specific to the to the to the year it was more i just wanted it in this timeless kind of setting for for me i'm i'm not a fan of horror modern horror mainly because i feel technology undermines it Mm -hmm. um this is just a personal thing you know um well i've spoken to a lot of directors and everybody almost everybody loves practical effects as opposed to yeah yeah computer generated stuff I think for me, it's just the, the most pure form of escapism I can do for myself. Like, I I, I don't want for, for my films to kind of go, oh, that's a road that I might see or that's a place that I might see. I want to see places that it's like, well, that doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah. That time's, that time's gone. So I want to I wanna live in that time a little bit rather than, you know, be something that's too close to, to, to familiarity. Very nice. Very nice. 
Uh, moving forward now with uh, you guys and what you want to do, we have newcomers, we have some veterans. Uh, what would you like to do next? Uh, Tomas, let's start with you. Uh, you. You said you have a feature that is in festivals right now. You have made plenty of shorts. Where would you like to see your career go from here? Let's hope that besides no. becoming the next Martin Scorsese, which would be great. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. There's not going to be a, a next Martin Scorsese. He's 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 unique. Um, so, I would. Say I'm currently in post production of another short film, which I would say it's kind of like a drama horror. Okay. Um, so let's hope that comes out in the next five to six months. We're color grading, sound designing right now, uh, uh, working on the music. So. Let's see how that goes, but I would love to just spend the rest of my life creating films. I guess that's awesome. that's what I love. It's it, it's a passion. It's something that, honestly, I would say I'm I'm a workaholic on that. It's like I cannot stop thinking on film. Even watching a film sometimes, it's like I can't watch a film today because I'm going to start analyzing it, and I just can't. <laughs> so I'm guessing that everybody has that same curse. It's a blessing and a curse at times. So sometimes just reading a book is 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 just an escape, not watching a film. So let's hope that. Absolutely. Now, Solus, what year did you do Solus? Sorry? What year did uh, Solus get produced in? When did you film it? Oh, that was September last year. Oh, really? So Yeah, it was, it was very new. Okay. Now, have you started working on, are there plans for you to work on something more in the near future? We have already released um, two other short films, and we're filming, we're starting to film our next one this coming Wednesday, so next week and finishing that short at the end of the month and then we've already written three or four more shorts so every four weeks we write direct act produce and deliver a short film every four weeks that's a challenge very nice now you guys all submitted your films to our film festival uh that's why you're here is that really what you're doing what you guys are doing just you know making the shorts and getting them out there to festivals to be seen and basically, yeah. you you guys are just looking for exposure, correct? To get your work seen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So this is this is great exposure today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, how about you, David? Uh, you've been doing this for a while. What would you like to see happen moving forward? Uh, some money. Cool. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We hear you. Anyone s- send me your unwanted <laughs> money? You got yeah. money, you don't need it. You send it to me. Now, um, uh, we... We're, I'm working with a producer at the minute and we're looking at trying to get Familiar made as a feature. Um, we're going to be going to Cannes this year if it isn't shut down from COVID. Yeah. And um, I've got two other screenplays and yeah, just get the just get the full feature made really. That, that, well, that happens very often where, you know, big movies have started out as, as short films. I've interviewed mm-hmm. a lot of people who... Uh, yeah. I was actually surprised as I'm doing my research, getting ready to interview them, that the feature that we're going to talk about started out as a short film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you have like a screenplay in mind with familiar, with all dialogue since it's a, you know, no dialogue short to make it into a feature? Yeah, the the, the screenplay is already written that the, the, the short is essentially the first 10 minutes of the film and then there is dialogue in it it's very minimal if you think of like you know uh i'm trying to think like like m night Shyamalan kind of does it yeah. it's very minimal dialogue it's very uh, you know atmospheric and just low-key dialogue it, it's kind of like that okay. but um, i mean it's still essentially like five people in it it's just one location so it's not a super expensive project to kind of get off the ground, but I do need the the, the problem with it is is actors. I've, I've got to get good actors because it's almost a, it almost gets a little you know Shakespearean in in the relationship between the guy and the creature. The, you know the creature starts to appear to him as as like an old man, uh, so they can talk, and it's it's that where it's like if if I don't have good actors for that, it's gonna it's gonna fall. So we're we're, we're currently talking to a casting director about getting it in front of some high profile actors and. Yeah, that is so. essential. I mean, uh, every part, every department in making a film is essential. But I've told a lot of people the two main, most essential things. You need a good story and you, you need the acting, okay? Because, yeah, you know, there's uh, talent and actors when you're watching them on the screen. If they can draw you into their world, 
yeah. which is what a film or a television show is supposed to do, then you know you've got some great talent right there. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, with you guys, having this being your second film, Trapped, you just, I'm assuming, you want to keep busting out those short films and looking for that big break, right? Um, so, I'm actually... I, I'm going to be very weird, and a lot of people are very much so going to disagree with what I'm about to say, but uh, I gave myself a new motto of, I don't want to do something just because I can, but I want to do it because I know it would be great. Um, yeah, and this is that's what something this is all that about. I've, that's what the model, this is something that I've stuck to really much so um, to the point where uh, just recently some guy had asked me to direct a short, and I just really didn't know if I wanted to do that. Um, strictly because I'm also very much a, I want to write a lot of my own things, um, to which I really already have, like every single thing that I want to do, I've already have it written. Like I already have five features written. Um, I know I won't be able to do a few of them just because of how absolutely ridiculous budget that would be required to do it. <laughs> um, but there's a few feature I've, features I've wrote where one of them's just a one location, uh, eight cast crew. Uh, another one is another one location. Um, that is a hefty cruise of like 16 people, but I know quite a few actors. Um, Oklahoma, in case you guys don't know this, uh, we also have a rebate program. Where yeah, there's good if you tax ever incentives. Here, yep. Yeah. If you film from $50,000 or up, you get 35% of your budget back. Yeah. So we, we really what, familiar. Yeah. yeah. A lot of what we're looking forward to doing is I really, you know, want to find like uh, somebody who. Uh, has any stock in me at all uh, to try and get something done, yeah. um, try and give them a product that they want and everything. So that's my biggest and goal And you've got right now, five just... scripts that are done? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Are they all just various genres all over, you know? Uh, so I have two. Um, one is a sci-fi animation uh, called Key to the Cosmos. I have another sci-fi script. Uh, it's a sci-fi drama called Cosmic Convalescence. Uh, another drama called Terribly Good with Words. Uh, comedic thriller called Piggy Went to the Market. And uh, mystery thriller I just wrote called House of Judgment. Wow. And I think I covered all of them. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. And what you said, I mean, it's right. if people get into this industry to become rich, you're going to sorely be disappointed. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah, you're going to be sorely it, because the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, it doesn't work like that. you got to really believe and love in what you do to start yes. this and yeah. to continue with it. And with I'll that... What, I love the motto you guys had before. That was a cool one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You guys, again, congratulations. You guys are great. Uh, we're, I'm so ecstatic that you guys submitted your films to our film festival and made it such a huge success. It's been an honor talking to all four of you. I know there's going to be great stuff coming from all four of you. Uh, Millie, congratulations on your first film being such a success. Uh, Thank you so much. So That was a great film. I really loved your film. Yes. Thank all you. That was fantastic. I loved yeah. everyone's work. So you are all Yeah, you, you guys. You, you guys are no, an inspiration. Great stuff. Great stuff, guys. That, that's the way to go. Just keep creating you know exactly. never stop never stop creating exactly that's what this is all about i want to thank all our four guests i want to thank our audience for tuning in whether you're watching this live or later on if you guys have the passion for it and you want to create something don't let anybody tell you you can't i started this show with nothing i didn't even know i didn't have a distant uncle in entertainment i started this with nothing and Today I'm talking to you four great people. I'm to you to you five great people. So anything can happen. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot do it. So congratulations again to you guys. Thank you to everybody. You. Till next time, stay safe, stay walking. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. See you guys.